Surrounded by the watching women and the ever-guarding panther, the men sit idly while Ruig, who seems to have a fetish for being clean-shaven, is scraping his cheek with a sharp-edged stone. I want to tell all you people out there in Disneyland, and that's exactly where you're from, is Disneyland. If you really want to get a tattoo, get something. Go big or go home. And if you really want to see a nice tattoo, hey, hey, hey. feast your eyes on that, boys and girls. Ooh, wouldn't you like to get naked with me? Woo-hoo! This is my back, okay? Are you ready? And that's a really nice tattoo. Okay, these girls came on Speaker's Corner and saying that Guys with baggy pants look like fruits, and you can see their eyes and everything. We're here to talk about skater boys. Pull up your pants. <laughs> you look like you have, like, this massive load in, in your hands. hands. <laughs> like, what do you expect us girls to think about you guys? We try to check out your and, and we can't. We can all see nothing. We don't want these guys with these big baggy so pants. Good. No. <laughs> We don't want tight pants, though. But we don't want too tight of pants. No, because then that's gross. <laughs> we just want, you just gotta find a middle. Find a middle for us. But we find them sexy. Baggy pants are nice. Look, we're wearing we're baggy, baggy pants, pants, all right? And we think it's nice. So we I want you to want, shut up. We don't want any guys with wearing, like, spandex, like, tight to your friggin' I can't believe we're doing pants. this. That's okay, though. Oh, get off the seat. <laughs> we think that this is very sexy. So, guys... Keep on wearing, wearing your baggy pants. pants. Keep on wearing them. Because, yeah. I mean, they're very sexy. And when they fall, you can see their... It's, it's, it's great. great. It's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. I want everybody to know that plumbers are not slobs. I'm a plumber. You think plumbers are all slobs, that we're all dirty and we smell and we're... are sticking out of our pants. Look, it's my... sticking out of my... Look, I got a nice... Look, it's not sticking out of my pants. I'm not gay. I will not comment on his ass. <laughs> Plumbers are not slobs, and we make very good money. In fact, we make a lot of money. <laughs> I hope my boss is not watching this. <laughs> if you ask for a plumber the next time, just remember, plumbers will treat you with a lot of respect. We might rip you off here and there, but hey, we got a trade and you don't. What can we do about that? See you later. Like, man, guys have had their heads chopped off for less than that. For what? For feeling so doggone good when I feel so bad. How'd I get here anyway? People that come on Speaker's Corner, and not just Speaker's Corner, I'm talking about baseball games or anywhere, and they have this whole Jesus freak attitude. And they come on here and they preach about Jesus and how people need to get saved and stuff, and it's driving me nuts. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a Christian. I'm in Bible college. I'm t I want to be a pastor. I want to be a youth pastor. But these people drive me nuts. I don't understand. They obviously don't understand what their faith is all about because they seem to think that Jesus is some kind of billboard sign and is not. It's something that's in your real life. There is no such thing as street evangelism. There is harassing people, okay? There's harassing people on the street. That does nothing. I was reading in the paper that, I don't know, 66% or maybe it was 46%. Anyway, some percentage of all Canadians think the internet ought to be patrolled, censored, you know, looked after by the government or some agency or something. That's alarmingly high. Um, and the main reason would be the large population all of a sudden coming online. Everyone's got, all of a sudden got a computer now. Of course, their kids are getting online as well, right along with them. And as usual, the parents aren't monitoring their children. And so they see what's on the net, and some of it's good, some of it's bad, and if you don't, you know, protect your children or monitor what your children are doing on the computer, it can be more dangerous than a gun, so it's probably not an ideal thing. And so, of course, now they want to ban it, they want to regulate the internet, oh, we must stop, we, we, can't, be, we can't be doing parenting or something, we're busy working and earning our 50k a year or something like that, you know? And I, there's more There's more to being a parent than just breeding. You have to look after your children. So if you don't like what's on the internet, don't try to take it away from the people who do, who use it as a resource. Beautiful, isn't it? In its own alien way, I guess it is. New Year's resolution, it was New Year's the other day, and Nick and I didn't like each other. And now... We're best we, friends. We're best friends because we decided our New Year's resolution was to like each other. So that's what we're doing. Just a little bit that we can do to help out the world in this desperate time. <laughs> Can't we all just get along? So nice. There. We're doing it for her. She's getting along too because she's my girlfriend and she's her friend and Aww. they want us to get along. You know what we I'm have saying? a thing going. She doesn't know. No, that's not happening. <laughs>
A place that's cold, a place with snow, a place that no one wants to go. Toronto, 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 Vancouver! <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about those kids. They're the only problem children I know are the ones that have problem parents, which leaves us out. <laughs> Cheers, darling. Hamsa. Hamsa. Hamsa means heavenly bliss. And if you'd like to try or feel a little bit of heaven, I suggest you try meditating. Um, you can learn about meditating um, by getting a book at the library and also through the internet. Uh, meditating for me has changed my life uh, within the last year. Um, I feel much more at peace, much more relaxed. Um, makes me feel very calm throughout my day. And um, if I don't meditate through the day, I see a big difference in my day. Um, so if you want to experience a little bit of heaven, that's just trying meditating. It's great. I've traveled all the way from New Brunswick to make it to center, the center of Ontario, and I feel I should let everyone know that you should travel this great country of ours. We uh, take it for granted. We've got second largest country in the world, and I know a lot of us haven't had a chance to see all of it. Visit the East Coast. It's beautiful. There's scenery and fish. There's, you know, Anne of Green Gables and everything else, and make it to the West Coast and travel all points in between. That's my goal for life, and I hope everyone else gets the chance to do that, too. We're from Winnipeg. Say hi. Hi! How you doing? Anyways, we're from Winnipeg. We're here on the weekend. Toronto has really good <laughs> bars, but they're not like Winnipeg. Winnipeg bars rock. You know, we come here, and people are, you know, they're not quite the same here as what they are in Winnipeg, only because they're very anti-social. We go to Winnipeg bars, we have a great time. We come here and, you know, like, bottom line, it sucks. Sucks big time. Because the women will not talk socially to two good-looking guys. Like us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, have you met Mike? I'm have Mike. you met Mike? <laughs> just back from Cuba, the two of us are just here to say one has to have respect for Fidel Castro. The man is standing up against the Americans although the Americans are having a stupid boycott. It's nice going somewhere without a big American influence. You know, there's no McDonald's, there's no Pizza Hut, there's no Burger King. It's Cuban. There's a full culture there, and you actually enjoy experiencing what Cuba is all about. Yes, we agree it's poor. I was in Memphis, Tennessee recently, and I walked into a bar to give them my ID. And the lady at the counter said to me, you know, where's your date of birth? I can't find it in her little American accent. And um, I said to her, well, you know, it's right here. It says born November 10th, 77. And she looked at me and she went, ma'am, I don't read Canadian. I can't understand you. Find me something with your date of birth on it. And um, I just thought that was kind of interesting. I think that comment kind of speaks for itself. I think I'll go back to my igloo now. Her name is Boo. Boo Bear. And uh, she's a little bit fidgety right now because it's cold, <laughs> obviously. And uh, here's her little hat. <laughs> she looks pretty cute. And she's a big sweetheart. She falls asleep in your arms. She's toilet trained. She's, we can take her anywhere. She's very sweet. She's gentle. She's loving. She never bites, um, never scratches. Well, little scratches, but not anything big. And she's just a sweetheart. Like, look at her. She's already falling asleep because, you know, she's at ease. She's a good, good pet. I highly recommend this to any parent who wants to get a pet, you know, for their kid. It's much better than, you know, a dog. Less maintenance. You don't have to take it for a walk. You just These are our little scream streamers for Boo Bear. Boo Bear likes them. <laughs> Forget hamsters, get rats.